for creep feeding that those that do not understand creep feeding, it's a system whereby only the calf can enter the feed area. Is this a divisional gate between where the cows are and the rested paddock where the feeder is. That divisional gate is replaced with a creep gate. A creep gate being a gate that only calves can access. And when you do that, the calves go through there to access that feeder because they can see it's something different. They're in inquisitive little fellas. They notice that in the paddock, not only is there a feeder, but there's fresh pasture. So they spend more and more time grazing in there. But that, that divisional gate and that creep gate must be set up in an area where cattle often frequent. It can't be right up the end of the, the paddock where they never hardly go. It's got to be in an area that's a, like a traffic area. So it's not suitable to all situations. You, there's some paddocks that we can't do that. So we have to put the creep feeder actually in the paddock and then move them to another paddock later on where we can do that. It's a three prong effect. Initially, creep feeding does enhance the performance of the calf, particularly in a season like we've had now of a failed spring, a lack of protein and energy in the pasture. So we supplement that with a, a, with a pellet. Uh, the, the one we use is uh, called DDG, which is dried distiller's grain. It's a byproduct from the ethanol plant at Bombardieri. Uh, it's high in protein, high in energy, and relatively low in starch. Starch is, uh, or can be a problem in feeding animals. So we use that and that increases the performance of the calf. And the method that we use with a creep gate and the feeder in an adjoining paddock is the calves go through the creep gate to access that feeder, but they also, and that paddock has been rested, they also notice there's fresh pasture in that paddock, so they spend more and more time grazing independently of their mothers. And initially when you do that, the cows are hanging on the fence. They're quite disturbed that their calf is in another paddock. That wanes after a couple of weeks. The calf spends more and more time grazing independently. So at the time of, or the day of weaning, it's not a cold turkey. Mum was there on Sunday, she's gone on Monday. They're somewhat used to grazing independently. So they settle down far more quickly under the mist method than they would if you just did it cold turkey. It's, um, and I don't know, I've got no data to prove that. Only anecdotally, I've, I've observed if you do the cold turkey weaning in a, in a weaning yard, it takes those cows about a week and the calves a week to get over that. This method I've noticed has halved it. Pr three days, they're, they're pretty comfortable with the situation. So that means, you know, if you've got cattle stress for a week, you're losing weight on both the cows and the calves. Now, sometimes it doesn't matter for the cows if they're in sufficient body condition, but in a season like this, it does matter. You don't, you don't want to lose anything excess weight on those cows. So it's just a smoother uh, transition at weaning time for us. And the calves are, are settled, they're used to the feeder. I noticed in the past when we first started yard weaning, when you put calves in a yard uh, with a feeder, they walk straight past the feeder. They're, more, they're only concerned about where their mother is and why the hell she's not there anymore. With this method, they know what the feeder is, they go straight to it, they're settled far more quickly. Yeah, so it seems to work quite well for us. Oh, I find they're, they're a great team of people, local land service, yeah. They've got expertise in all fields and I use their service quite, quite often. I've, I'm often talking to the district vet or, uh, or the livestock officers. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good service, so I enjoy it. And, and I think more people should try and access it, really.